welcome to episode 14 of the Madison Montes Knitting Podcast. I'm Madison. I am a knitter, spinner, and novice weaver. Um, and this is where I share all of those things with you. So thank you for joining me today. And I live in New York City, and you can find me on both Instagram and Ravelry as Madison Montes. Everything that I talk about today will be listed in the description box below, along with links to my Ravelry project pages, and that's where I like to keep the more nitty gritty things like what needle size I've used and uh, any notes on like modifications I've made and stuff like that. So that is where you can find those things. If you can't find something that you're looking for, feel free to leave a comment and ask or um, message me on Instagram or whatever, um, or wherever, <laughs> wherever you can find me. Um, okay, I have my notes with me. Today's episode is going to be a little bit of everything because it's been a little bit since I last uploaded a podcast. I have a lot of knitting that I want to talk about as well as some spinning and weaving, but I will leave those things for the end in case you're just here for the knitting. There's been a lot of dabbling amongst the crafts with me uh, the last three or four months since I last uploaded, so I won't talk about everything that I've gotten up to in that time period, but um, for the sake of this video not being three hours long, but I will talk about a lot of things, <laughs> and uh, but mostly what is like right now happening in my crafting and making world. Let's get into it. I don't know if you can tell, but I have a finished object right here. This is my pressed flower shawl that I took a full year to knit. I started this shawl February 2023 and I just finished it, I think this last February or January, um, but just in the last couple of months. This shawl, if you're not familiar with the Pressed Flowers family, is by Amy Christoffers um, or Savory Knitting, and I believe this was the first, but it's now turned into a pullover cardigan, cowl, vest, I think that's it, in the shawl, socks. <laughs> um, and it is a mosaic motif. I'll drape it like this and talk about it. The yarn is my hand spun, which is the multicolored uh, flower motif, uh, which is technically the contrast color in the pattern. And then the main color, this green, is Explore Knits and Fibers, um, their Rocky D, Rocky's DK base uh, in Prickly Pear which I thought was a really, I think this is like one of my favorite shades of green and I think it really matched um, the hand spun well, like it really helps it pop. I used the recommended needle, which is a US 6, and I did not make any pattern modifications other than doing an I-cord bind off. Um, the pattern calls for a sewn tubular bind off and I just didn't want to do that because there were like, you know, a million stitches at the end. You start, <laughs> you start up here and it grows as a triangle. Let me talk about my hand spun for a second. It is a bunch of different fibers. It's essentially one big combo spin because um, it's all spun from the Nest uh, Fiber Valentine Advent. I got that advent in 2023, so not this last February, but the February before. Um, I have a bunch of reels on my Instagram. I opened one up every day and made a reel <laughs> and spun it and then made um, two like big skeins out of it. It created this really fun, very colorful, um, you know, kind of crazy in some places yarn. This spinning project was quite a big endeavor. I mean, 14 ounces is a lot to take on. I had only been spinning for mm, four months, like less than, 
less than six months, I learned, I think that November, this spin was quite a big undertaking for what I felt like my skill level was at that time. Um, you know, I wasn't really spinning consistently. I wasn't making consistent yarn. I, but you know, was really wanting to get better and spinning at least one ounce every day for two weeks definitely unlocked a lot of things for me in spinning and I think there were so many things that clicked during this spin and you can kind of see how my spinning got more consistent and progressively better from start to finish um that I think this really helped me and I'm really proud of this spin and you know I still have this much left so I don't know <laughs> quite what I want to do with this but it's fun to have um, these scraps and I am really happy that I could knit it up into like a really special piece and obviously you know this yarn is not the most consistent so there are parts of the shawl that feel really thick um, and yeah I don't know I'm a little concerned about how wearable it is with how thick you know I don't know I'm like do I put this over a coat in the winter time I don't know. I might like wear it around the house a lot when it gets cold. So I haven't, it hasn't gotten much wear, but I'm really happy with it. I loved the design and knitting it and, um, you know, it does have a lot of stitches by the end. I'm not, I haven't knit that many shawls. Um, so I was like, <laughs> wait wait there's like a lot of stitches now um you know it goes so fast in the beginning and then you get to the middle and end, and one row was taking me like an hour but I um all that to say I definitely want to make this shawl again I think I would do it in a fingering or a sport weight like I would love a lighter weight version of this shawl um and I might leave off the border. As you can see, the like this is the main chart and then the border chart, the flowers are um, much more closer together or there's more of them. And I think I would just like leave that off and then just keep doing these repeats um, until it was as big as I wanted. So someday <laughs> I will make another one. Um, I have a lot of things that I'm working on right now, so it's not gonna be it's not anywhere in the pipeline at the moment, but to come for sure. Um, but yes, anyway, this is my pressed flowers. And I think I'm gonna drape it on the back of the chair because it is pretty warm. Okay, I've got four, four more finished objects to share. So I'm gonna try to keep things moving along. First up is um, my emotional support chicken, who I love <laughs> very much. <laughs> um, she's huge also like this head for scale she's huge um, and she doesn't have a name yet so if you have any name ideas please <laughs> please drop them down below uh, but this I feel like if you are on Instagram or watch quite a bit of knitting YouTube you've probably seen this pattern before it is from the Knitting Tree LA, which is a yarn store out in LA. And there must be like a chicken knit along or something that's happening. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know the cause of everyone knitting an emotional support chicken, but when I saw them, I was like, I need, <laughs> I need to make one right now. I think I knit this in less than a week. Um, and it was so fun. So would definitely recommend knitting yourself one. She's just filled with some polyfill and I knit her out of just random hand spun kind of one-off skeins that I had sitting around um, this gray main color is a some of my like first attempts at woolen uh, spinning or practicing like long draw from a bat the fiber was from on a rock air which is the creator of Newtodin they sell these like big fiber bats um, in some of their shop updates. So that's where this gray came from. And since it was one of my first attempts 
at long draw, which is a style of drafting the fiber um, in spinning. It's pretty, it came out pretty thick and inconsistent. I have like a little bit left over, you can see. So this is like, I don't know. I feel like it's anywhere from like a worsted to a bulky weight yarn. Um, but it's very light because it is wool and spun. So it's just a two ply and it has some like color variation in it, which is really pretty. But again, very, you know, pretty inconsistent. And I figured a chicken was a good place to use it because <laughs> I didn't know how else I would use it. And then her stripes are from my pressed flowers leftovers, which was this skein that I already showed. Um, so that's cute. You got the little crochet tail seam. And then the her beak is from some of this yellow. This is like a sample skein of Hello Yarn um, Targi that I spun up forever ago. I did this sample. I was gonna, I wanted to knit a Andrea Maori Weekender out of this. Um, and basically I spun, <laughs> I have a lot of this fiber left. I spun eight ounces of it and thought I hated the colors after I did that. So then I set it down and that was probably over a year ago. I haven't touched it since, but I have been feeling like I'm ready to kind of get back to this spin. Um, but this fiber is, you know, it's a lot of yellows and browns and greens. I guess there's some white in there too. Um, but it's targy, so it's nice and fluffy and light and very bouncy. So that's what I used for her little beak. For these little pieces, I actually used just a teeny, I have a little teeny skein um, from an art bat that came with one of my new support spindles. And this was like the very first fiber, um, very first yarn that I spun on that support spindle. So it's very inconsistent, but woolen and light. Similar theme, I guess, throughout all of this. This is my woolen my woolen spun chicken. Um, and I held that since it was pretty thin, I held it with a uh, red fingering weight that I had in my stash. I believe it was like a little bit of Spindrift, Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift fingering weight. Um, so just add it, make it a little bit more red. So yeah, that is her. Um, what was I gonna say about her? Oh, I followed the pattern to a T. It calls for US 7 needle, that's what I used, and I loved it. I love this pattern. I definitely am going to be making more chickens in probably a variety of sizes, and that's my chicken. So I filled her with polyfill, and I ordered a 32 ounce bag of polyfill, not even like thinking how big that would be. And it is a huge bag of polyfill. You definitely don't need, I mean, I used a good amount stuffing her for sure, but um, don't get 32 ounces if you just <laughs> are stuffing your chicken. But I figured in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm gonna need more polyfill because I'm also making these little motion friends creatures. Um, I think I showed her in my last video. She was like, I think had half a body. Um, but this is Hazel the Squirrel. So cute, I just stuffed her and I had to, um, there was like the teeniest hole that was left to stuff it. And I was like, I, there's no way I can fit stuffing through that. So I had to rip out some of her tail. So I'm gonna have to fix that. Um, and then I need to sew up the bottom, but she is stuffed and she's so cute. I might put a little bit more stuffing in her. I haven't decided um, how stuffed to make her, but 
It's just so cute. Um, so yeah, so now I'm gonna have to make like all of the motion friends and like a dozen more chickens and then maybe I'll get through my bag of polyfill. <laughs> so I just wanted to give a little update on Hazel. I am knitting this for a friend who had twin babies in January and I was, you know, wanting to get this done before the babies were born and that hasn't happened. And I still want to knit um, a another Mooshin Friends. I It's the raccoon, I think, that I want to make. Billy. Billy the raccoon um, is next on my list. And I just haven't gotten around to knitting him. It is like tiny needles. And the pattern is wonderfully laid out, like all of them. The book, I don't have it with me right now. I don't know why I didn't bring it with me. Um, but it is a line by line situation. So it takes a bit of focus. Um, it's not mindless at all because each line, each row is usually different. Um, so yeah, I just haven't been in the brain space to cast on the raccoon, but I'm hoping to do that soon because I really would like to send them off to their final destination, but they're so cute. I need to figure out what, um, I don't know, I'm still trying to figure out if I want to knit a little outfit, like knit a little t-shirt for them, or just send them like this. I feel like they're really cute like this too. <laughs> so yeah, this is Hazel. So that's two stuffed knitted creatures. Um, and that's it for the animals. Now I wanna get into some socks. I haven't really publicized this much, maybe on Instagram some, but it is my goal this year and I'm very determined um, to knit at least one pair of socks every month this year. I have a sock yarn stash that I am excited to knit through and I want to knit through, so I'm making sure I prioritize sock knitting this year. And so far, I am on track <laughs> so far. So I am going to show you my finished January and February socks, and then we will get into whips with my March socks that I'm working on. Um, these are my January socks. I, I have two of them. I casted them on Christmas Eve. They were... Um, I don't know, I wanted like a little Christmas Eve cast on and I was like, I'll get started on my January socks a few days early. And I'm really happy with how they turned out. This is a sock set from Homespun House and the colorway is called My Favorite Flannel. Um, so it came with these two contrast minis, the brown and the green. And the pattern is Crunkled Socks by Kay Jones. It was my first time knitting this pattern and I loved it. I thought it was great. It's, um, when we get to my March socks, you will see, but also if you've been around before, you know that I've knit the Hermione everyday socks and I love, and I feel like this is kind of a similar sock pattern in that it's like almost a vanilla sock, but as the slightest texture um, but still a stitch pattern that's very easy to memorize um, and is like, you know, just a half step up from a vanilla sock. I knit these on a US1 needle, which is what I usually knit all of my socks on. I knit the 64 stitch size, which is again what I usually knit. And the only modification I made was subbing in a Fish Lips Kiss Heel. Um, instead of the heel flapping gusset that it called for. And I've talked about the Fish Lips Kiss heel before. It's just, I don't know. I like it a lot. I find it to be really easy and quick to knit. I don't love picking up stitches. Um, and that's that. <laughs> that's all I have to say about it. I am pro fish lips cause heel. I'm trying this year to convince myself to be more open to a heel flapping gusset. 
Um, it's truly just out of laziness that I usually don't want to knit one. And But I'll get there. You know, I'll do it. Um, but it hasn't happened yet this year. So moving on to my February socks. These ones are a little bit more um, scrappy looking. And I just was wearing them yesterday. So they're not the cleanest or, you know, they look kind of misshapen. Um, but I'm still really happy. They actually fit really well. I think I've decided that a five to six inch long leg is kind of the sweet spot. Um, I'm trying, this is six inches. I'm trying out five inches on my March socks. So we'll see if I like that. I love a long leg for my more like winter cozy socks. And then as we're getting into some warmer weather, but I'm still wearing hand knit socks at home, but it's not you know, 30 degrees out anymore. Um, starting to think about maybe a little bit shorter of a leg. So the saga with my February socks is I had started a pair of pressed flower socks um, last summer. I think I was traveling and was like, I need a pair of socks to knit just in case. I think I only got through the cuff and then kind of set them down. So when February came around this year, I was like, perfect time for me to pick these back up and knit them. Um, but it is a slip stitch pattern and I did not follow the pattern recommendation of sizing up to a US one and a half um, needle. I was like, oh, it'll be fine on my US one that I always use. It was not. I got through the heel on one sock and it was too tight. <laughs> so that made me sad. <laughs> and then, so I was like, okay, I'll set, I'll set those down. And then, you know, I'll come back to it, rip it out, figure out a needle situation. I didn't have a US one and a half at the time. So I was like, now is not the time to deal with this sock. Found another sock whip that I had. I had knit a pair of shorties out of a sock set sometime last year. I don't know if it was last spring or summer. And they were like, okay, but I wasn't obsessed with them. I, the yarn, I had, yeah, there was, um, I'll try to find a photo of them if I have one, but it was like, I messed up the heel. So like the fit was a little off and the, it called for three colors, but one of my colors wasn't contrasting enough. So it looked like I'd only used two colors. It was a summer lead pattern. I think it was the brioche light shorties, which I want to knit, but I'm like, I need to actually figure out a good yarn color combo for that. Actually, maybe I'll make like a scrappy pair with some minis I don't know anyway so I had finished that one sock and shortly after finishing it I had decided that I wanted to rip it out and re-knit the sock set into a different pair of socks so I did that and I casted on another summer lee knits uh, pattern the slip rib socks I think is what they're called basically that sock ended up being too small again I need to re-knit them with a US one and a half. Because of the slip stitches, it was like a tighter circumference than I was expecting. So that was a bummer. And this is all happening in February. <laughs> My knitting, knitting drama. Um, so, you know, it was like, okay, we're getting towards the end of the month. I have two failed socks. I'm just gonna cast on a vanilla sock and that's what these are. So the main color is a Katia sock yarn that my sister uh, bought for me in Spain, I think, when she was there a couple years ago, last year. I can't remember when exactly. Um, and it's so fun. I love those like kind of self-patterning sock yarns. These are just like minis I had. So the heel is some Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift. Again, I subbed in or I used the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. Sorry for the piece of fuzz on there. Um, so that's just 100% wool. So, and then the toe is, I believe, a Lobbyan May mini that I had sitting around. I don't know. I have a basket of little minis that are kind of a mystery now. I can't remember where all of them are from. So I pulled it from that basket. And 
This was also during the Super Bowl, and I'm from Kansas City, and the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Um, so I feel like that's where this was. The red and the yellow are the Chiefs colors, and I feel like that's where that was coming from. Two by two rib for the cuff, and yeah, as I said, six inch heel, and then I did a fish lips kiss heel. Usually I don't love the fit of vanilla socks. I think they like stretch out quite a bit and or I have a hard time feeling like they fit well. But these, I wore them yesterday in my sneakers just for a little walk in the park. And um, I feel like they actually fit pretty well. So we'll see if they stretch out anymore, but so far so good. And it makes me kind of want to knit some more vanilla socks. The yarn ball of this Katya, I finished this pair and it looks like I had not knit with any of it. Like I still have so much yarn left. So I feel like I'm going to be making some more pairs with this yarn specifically. So yeah. Okay. So now one more sock to talk about because it's March, you know, I got to get my March sock in. And so that will bring us into the whip portion of this podcast. Um, I need to show off my knitting Nelly bag. Obsessed with these bags. I have two of her sock project bags um, and they're just so cute. So this one's like perfect for spring and it has my March sock in it. Um, I have not gotten very far. I've been very focused on other things that I will show you shortly, uh, but I will get this done before the end of March. So this is the start of my March sock. As you can see, it's another kind of almost vanilla, but has a slight texture to it. The pattern is the Prairie Socks by Kay Jones. And as I just mentioned, I'm from Kansas City, the Kansas side, which, you know, Kansas is all prairie grasslands. Um, and I have had this pattern in my library for a while and have been wanting to make it. And this sock set that I have um, just really felt like prairie colors to me. And then you've got yellow and the blue contrast colors. Um, so I always think it's fun when you can pair, you know, the colorway vibe to the pattern vibe. Um, in the pattern, it says that she was inspired by Little House on the Prairie. Uh, so, you know, that's where these socks come from. And I was a big Little House on the Prairie girl growing up. I loved the books. I loved the TV show. Loved all of it. We went to like the cabins around the Midwest that they had, <laughs> like as a family. <laughs> um, so that was really fun. Um, but the yarn, this is a sock set that I got in last year's Year of Socks subscription from La Mercerie, the yarn store out in Washington State. The dyer is Ballyhura, Ballyhara. I looked up how to pronounce it and now I can't remember how. I believe it's an Irish uh, dyer or she's... The dyer is from the States, but she lives in Ireland, I think is, um, I think is the story there. It's the two ply sock base and it is so soft. I've really been enjoying knitting with it. I don't knit with a lot of variegated yarn outside of socks. Uh, so it's fun to, fun to have it in a sock. I feel like if I buy variegated yarn, it is probably a sock. A sock yarn. I have to finish it before March because I need to stay on track. I was knitting a lot of DRK Everyday socks as you may know if you've watched any of my videos before and I feel like I definitely need to make a pair or two after I finish this March sock. Um, but I also want to do some shorties. So we'll see. We'll see what comes next. We are in the whips. I have I have so many whips. I'm not gonna share. I have one more I'm gonna share with you. Uh, but again, if you've watched any of my videos before, you may notice that I like share things. Like I'll share a whip and then it kind of disappears for, you know, 
potentially a year <laughs> like my pressed flowers until I pick it back up again. So I do have a lot of lingering whips and it's been feeling rather overwhelming. I have a lot of things that just have been taking me longer than I would like, i.e. my big cozy cardi that is still haunting me. I wanted to finish it last year and I didn't. I just like haven't even thought about it. All that to say, I have quite a few things like hibernating in my Ravelry. I've been really trying to just keep my current active whips listed as whips um, or listed as in progress on my Ravelry and then kind of let everything else <laughs> go to the bottom so it doesn't overwhelm me um, because this is, you know, this is my hobby and I do it for fun and I don't want to stress myself out for no reason over things. Um, but in that, I feel like, you know, I was trying to think of a way to come up with a good strategy for how I could get through my lingering whips while also casting on some new things because I have a lot of things that I want to work on, you know, as one does. My strategy is a three whip at a time strategy. <laughs> So what that has been looking like the last couple of months is usually a sock project because I'm knitting a pair of socks every month and then two other projects. One, at least one is a like lingering whip um, and then the other is flexible. Um, but I'm really trying to stick to only working on those three things until something is done and then once that finished project opens up a spot for something new, then I will bring something new into the fold of the three. And it's been working pretty well so far. I mean, you know, knitting is a slow craft, so it's not like I'm speeding through all my projects at lightning speed, because I also have spinning and weaving and other things, <laughs> trying to read more, you know, there's other things I'm trying to do with my time, but it's been a really nice way to help me like focus on certain things and then also gives me that sense of momentum when I'm like finishing a project and then I'm like, yay, I can bring something new into my three whips and it's fun. So you saw my sock and now I will show you my other whip that is almost, almost done. This is my second whip. This is the Versal by Albina McLaughlin, uh, who is one of my favorite pattern designers. And I just wanted to show you that I put in that little, <laughs> the little blue yarn to mark the back. Um, but this is a top down in the round saddles shoulder construction uh, pullover. And it is, this one's rather large. Can I get it? Um, because it is the men's version. This pattern actually comes with a women's and a men's version. This is the men's size three that I'm knitting um, for my boyfriend. I tried to tell him there was a curse and that I couldn't knit a sweater for him, <laughs> but he did not believe me. Um, so I am knitting a sweater for him. He's actually very knit worthy. He has some socks and hats and um he has a sophie scarf that my mom knit for him that he wears all the time so he he wears his knits so i know he's gonna love the sweater um and i'm really excited about how it's coming out obviously i've been having him try it on as we as we go as i knit it he's not helping me um and it's fitting really well so i'm excited to finish the last sleeve and then block it out because I feel like he's like I don't know that he knows what blocking will do I mean he kind of I think he understands the concept but visually I'm excited for him to see it when it's blocked okay so the details men's version size 3 I'm knitting it on the recommended needle size which is a US 7 uh, for the main needle and then I the yarn is Newtedin held double. Uh, this is the colorway, I think it's called Solvanda. Does that sound right? Oh. Um, but it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of a hard color to describe. It's 
it's like beige but gray but has some hints of like orange and yellow throughout. I'm not quite sure how to describe it, but I'm really happy with how it's looking and how it's knitting up. I had 500 grams of it and I am getting towards the end of it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like I'm feeling pretty confident that I have enough yarn to finish the sleeve, uh, but I did have a moment of like, oh no, what if I don't? That would be bad. My boyfriend has been asking for a sweater for quite some time and I I feel like I always had this pattern in mind. I've had it in my library for a while and I want to make one for myself. I feel like it's a really nice uh, classic sweater that is like, you know, will last forever. So I started it last November. It took me a few months to get through the yoke increases and then I finally split for sleeves. And as soon as I slipped for sleeves, it felt like it zoomed by. Because um, obviously it was just like straight stockinette knitting. And I knit that one sleeve this last weekend. So I'm really hoping that I can get through this next sleeve in like a day. So that project is going well. I think as soon as I finish that... Um, my third whip that is currently in my rotation is actually a secret test knit, so I can't share anything about that today, but I will obviously share more about that when I can. And I think that's going to be my primary focus for the next month or so um, until I finish that along with my socks. But then once those things are kind of in the clear, I really want to get back to my Geo Gradient, which is the MCAL from this last October uh, by Stephen West. And what else is on my docket? My Ingrid sweater has been lingering for far too long. She keeps getting <laughs> deprioritized, <laughs> even though I'm so excited about it. And, you know. It's gonna be so cute. I have yarn to make a vest, like a color work vest. So I have a lot of projects that I'm excited to get to in my knitting, um, hopefully sooner than later. And hopefully my little three whip strategy keeps me focused and moving along on things. Anyway, that's my whips. If you would like to stick around for some weaving and spinning chat, feel free. If not, Thank you for joining me today. Um, I promise it won't be as long as my knitting talk, um, but I have some exciting updates to share. Well, first of all, I should say that I'm really trying to share more of my finished objects, like finished spins and finished knits over on my Instagram. I had a realization that I was, I was like, I think I'm only sharing like progress <laughs> photos and then once I finish something I like tuck it away and like forget to photograph it um so I've really been trying to share more of my finished yarns and knits and stuff over on Instagram um sorry if you can hear that horn there's like some weird construction situation happening outside hopefully you can't hear it but I can't control it so um we'll just keep moving along so for spinning chat I finally fell down the support spindle rabbit hole. Like, I don't know how best to share these. Um, this is what I've got going on so far. Um, yeah, I'm obsessed. I've had them for like two weeks. I can't stop. I love that I can sit on the couch and spin. Um, and... It's so fun. It's so fun. These are, okay, I'll share what spindles I have and then this fiber and then, yeah. This spindle is a Mirkwood, which they have an Etsy shop, which is where I bought this. Um, this I bought directly from them. It was like a ready to ship spindle. I have, Found, which, and I'm sure if you're into spinning or support spinning, um, 
the spindle makers with cult followings are actually like very hard you know it's not just like they have spindles ready to go on their shop it can be a bit of a hunt uh to like find them um but luckily there's ravelry forums and d stashes and that's where i have found all of my other spindles and i have a few more that are in the mail right now that i'm very anxiously tracking <laughs> like i want them um so yeah but this was kind of the gateway this was a mirkwood and this is what i spun this little guy it came with two tiny little fiber bats so these were my like practice skeins um so yeah they're super cute and fun and i don't know what to do i'm like i want to knit i don't know what to put these in they're so cute and tiny and i love the sparkle i've never spun stellina before or i don't know what the sparkle is but i've never spun with sparkle before and i was like this is so fun um so yeah mirkwood is number one and then on a d-stash on a d-stash i found these two pretty 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 like cauldron styles this is a woodland woodland woodworking so pretty um so far this is like favorite obsessed spins so nicely this one i haven't had a chance to spin with yet but it is a silly salmon i have a feeling it's gonna be <laughs> one of my favorites and then um this is what i've been working on recently this is my rolag and this of course it's like you know now covered up with the fiber but this is a fang style um goddess spindle which if i'm correct the maker is no longer making spindles so the only way to get them is through d stashes and honestly i want like 10 more of these obsessed with it i love it so yeah that's all i have that's all i have right now but as i said i have a few more already on the way they're just so pretty and now that i know that i can spin on them i'm like i need to have so many <laughs> i need to collect them all it's like pokemon cards um and then i have a few i just have two little bowls this is a mingo asho uh glass bowl that literally just arrived today so pretty and this is a little ceramic spinning bowl from willow creek uh, which is an etsy shop i will link below mingo and asho i b also bought this on etsy i think that's where they sell all of their stuff um and i know their spindles seem to be very hard to get your hands on and i don't know i was just like randomly on etsy and they happened to have like i think they had just uploaded like a couple of these spinning bowls on their shop um and i snagged one immediately i also made this little bean bag for as a spinning cushion for my um little spinning bowl because you know this is kind of like if you want to set it on your leg or something i don't know it just wasn't it was slipping around so i was like i just need like a little bean bag um so i don't have a sewing machine so i hand sew this together and it's just like little poly beads in here Ooh. um and it works it's so cute i think i want to make one that's like slightly bigger this I think it's just under four by four inches and obsessed <laughs> obsessed ah i love this i have i keep having this like moment where i'm spinning and i'm like should i spin a sweater's quantity on my support spindles that would be crazy but i also wanted to show the fiber these are rolags from hikari handmade and they are so gorgeous i snagged two sets of rolags 
in her last shop update um she has one today and i'm like do i need more i don't know um haven't decided yet but her stuff sells out really quick so i was really excited to snag these when i did and then my package actually went missing you know i live in new york and it's kind of on a busy corner so stolen packages are not uncommon um but luckily i am usually working from home and if i know i have something coming i'm like tracking it and I will like run down as soon as I get a delivered notification and I did that or no these came on like the one day that I went into the office or something and then when I came home the package wasn't by my mailbox and I was like no this can't be happening <laughs> it can't be stolen um and I had no idea where it went I kept checking for a couple days and was just like okay you know what it's been stolen, I'm sad, nothing I can do about it, it's whatever, I'll just leave it. And then about like a week later, I got a knock on my door and my super had a box. And he was like, I found this in the basement um, next to the trash and I think it was supposed to be delivered to you. And it was my box of Rolex. Um, so someone had definitely stolen my package ripped it open, realized that these were of no use to them, <laughs> and then left it um, by the trash in my building. So thankfully for me, they found their way and they were still intact and I can spin with them. Um, so yeah, I've spun about half of the Rolex that I've got and i don't know i'm kind of ready to ply i think i might i wanted to spin all of them but i honestly might wind off what i have and then ply and maybe try out a new project um, or try out some different fiber on them i'm excited as i mentioned i'm traveling later this week so i am excited to actually be able to bring these with me and I've traveled with my Turkish spindles before, but I've never really gotten into a good rhythm with the drop spindle. Like I really have to be, okay, now is my time to do the drop spindle. Um, whereas the support spindles, like I feel like I've spun quite a bit already in just the two weeks that I've had them. Whereas I pick up my, my like Turkish spindles like once a month or something. <laughs> anyway. That is my support spindle journey. You may or may not know that I have a few fleeces in what I now call my fleece cabinet in my apartment. One of those fleeces is a CVM Rambouillet Cotswold Cross from Nystock Farms, which they produce amazing fleeces if you're ever looking um, to buy a fleece to process and spin. Uh, would definitely recommend them. And so I have, over the last couple of months, I've washed up, mm, how much do I have washed up now? At, like almost two pounds, I think, of that fleece I've washed. And so I have all this washed fiber that's ready to be carded and spun and whatnot. I'm determined to spin a sweater's quantity from fleece this year. A week or so ago, I carded up a bat. Um, I think it took like four ounces of fleece to card up for a sample. I just stripped it down and made all these little batlings out of it, um, which is essentially just, you know, a long strip of the bat. And it's so fluffy. So I have these. And now I'm like, do I support spindle? some of this i think i'm going to because i have plenty enough to play with um, but i did spin up a sample of yarn um and i want to make a sport weight yarn because i love sport weight patterns um <laughs> sport weight sweaters and i this is what i've got so far i spun up two of these one to 
each bobbin on my wheel, um, my Lindrum double treadle. So I like to make these control cards too. And so if I have a larger project that I'm starting on my spinning wheel that I kind of want to be more mindful of and track, I will make one of these. There are definitely plenty of times when I just spin for pure joy and I'm like, I'm not, I'm just going to do my default yarn. I'm not going to worry too much about, you know, being super, super consistent and whatever happens, happens. I do that a lot. Um, but I also do this a lot. And <laughs> this is the beginnings of one of my control cards. I brought this other one um, to show you of a spin that I just finished. So this is like, this is something that I make at the beginning of a spinning project. And then I always have my singles below. And then sometimes I put a plyback sample on here, which is what um, this one is right here. And then you can see my two singles. So this just helps me. And then I keep it on my wheel. And this just helps me as I'm spinning, I can stop and kind of compare and make sure that what I'm currently spinning looks like what I want it to. Um, and then I'll also keep notes on like what I've been, like the setup of my wheel um, and kind of like what my goal is. <laughs> so this was aiming for a DK weight. Um, and I actually did that. To make this, I will start spinning with some fiber and you know it takes a little bit to kind of make sure the tension is right and um you know that i'm on the right ratio and that i'm trying you know the speed and drafting and everything is kind of what feels right and then i will do a couple plyback samples and check to see that it's roughly in the area that i want it to be in terms of yarn weight and I just do that. I have one of those cards um, that has like, it's like one of those wraps per inch cards that also has the like indentations of the different yarn weights. Um, it's on my wheel right now, <laughs> otherwise I would show you. So, but I use that as kind of like a going off point. And once I'm creating a yarn that I'm happy with, I will, break off some of the singles, which is what you'll see here, and put it on here. And I just cut little um, little slits in the side and stick the yarn in there. And then I will also sometimes, um, usually if I'm making a two ply, I will make a plyback sample and then cut that off and also put that here. So then I can compare not only the singles, but the plyback sample um, as I am spinning. So I created that and then spun the rest of this yarn. Um, finished it, you know, let it dry, wound it up. I like to wind up my little mini skeins on my Nostapen. Um, and then, yeah, I need to knit with it. <laughs> I am going to try knitting a swatch with a US-4 and see what my gauge is. I have a sweater pattern in mind that I'd like to make. And so we'll see if I hit gauge for that. And if I do, then it'll be like full steam ahead on the spinning. Um, but like I said, I have plenty of fiber to play with. So I think I'm gonna try support spindling a few of these little uh, batlings and see how I like that. If all goes well, this will become my Rhinebeck sweater for this year. Um, so that's why I'm starting now because I have a lot to do. <laughs> okay, that's all my spinning chat for now. Again, I've been sharing a bunch of that over on my Instagram. So if you are interested in kind of more real time spinning updates, I share a lot there. So feel free to follow me over there. Um, and now I just wanna show off a few weaving projects that I've done. I can't remember if I had my floor loom last time I uploaded a video. I don't think that I did. Um, or maybe I was about to get it, I don't know. I have a floor loom now. She is a beautiful shacked um, wolf pup. No, what do I have? 
no that's the little one i have a baby wolf um so i have a 26 inch wide weeping width she's about like 32 or 34 inches wide total and four shafts i'm looking at her over in that corner right now um and i love her so much um so yeah i really fell down a weaving rabbit hole i mean i feel like i've been in this weaving rabbit hole for a while um there's just so much to learn that you it's just like it's a never-ending rabbit hole um and but yeah all of january the only thing i wanted to do was weave and i think i wove almost every day in january um i can't say that i've been doing that much weaving since but it has been consistent um progress so i've gotten i've got two projects that have come off my floor loom and i have a third that i just started weaving on this morning actually it's a twill sampler that i'm doing uh with like a bunch of colors and just playing around like it'll just be a sampler to have on hand um but my other projects i wanted to share because they are actually like functional <laughs> functional items so the first was this um this towel set so i only <laughs> I miscalculated. I ended up with only two towels of like actual towel size, like the correct dimensions. And um, these are like half size. <laughs> so I just like miss miscalculated. Uh, um while I was weaving and then I pulled it off the loom and I was like, oh, um, those aren't quite <laughs> quite the same size. But these two actually are, they're about the same size and I think I'm just gonna sew them together, you know, around the pattern, cut off the plain weave um, border and stuff it, cause I have all that polyfill, stuff it into a pillow and just like throw it on the couch or something. I feel like that'd be really just cute and easy. Um, I definitely don't want them to go to waste. Uh, but these, I finally, like I just hemmed these <laughs> last weekend or last week. I had them sitting around for ages and ages, just unfinished. So uh, I don't have a sewing machine. So I, um, I hand sewed the hem and I followed uh, Jane Stafford, Weaving Queen, um, has a great video on how to hem your woven towels. I will link that below, um, and that's what I use to follow um, to follow along and hem those. So we've been using these in the kitchen. I love them. It's 100% cotton. The warp was a 10-2 cotton, and then the weft. Um, this is actually like an overshot an overshot technique. I think it's like a Swedish overshot called Halvdral. Halv Halvdral. You know, it has the A with the two. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but it is a pattern from just yarn. So I will link it below. Uh, and yeah, so the tabby was the 10 2 and the pattern, which is the blue. The pattern weft um, was an 8 2 cotton unmercerized the rest of it is mercerized i'm pretty sure and i'm not crazy about the colors i just you know used what i had on hand and i think it's fine not obsessed but don't hate them so <laughs> that works for a first tea towel to or the first first warp to come off did i say the epi it was a 25 epi now looking back and like that feels a little ambitious like i think the th the thread count for the warp or like the ends it was like i don't know it was close to like 500 ends that i was threading um so it took me a minute um but i do love the fabric it made and i like that like thinner i like the 8-2 and the 10-2 i feel like those are kind of my favorite 
weaving yarn sizes. Um, so yeah. Okay, so my second project that I literally just pulled off the loom last night, so it's not finished or anything. It's still, it's just a bunch of fabric that's all folded up. Um, these are more towels. It's another just yarn pattern and it's more overshot. Um, so, but this is a little bit of a more <laughs> manageable EPI. This is woven at, I think, 18 inch per inch, if I'm rem remembering correctly. The warp is uh, an 8-2 cotton, and then for the weft, the tabby is the same, 8-2, and then the blue, what is that? I think it's like a 4-2 cotton. I'm glad this project is over. I don't think I will make these again. I think I'm going to hem them and give the towels away uh, to family or friends. Yeah, I really like overshot as a technique, but this specific pattern, it was like as soon as I started weaving, like, you know, it took me forever. <laughs> the warp was so long. It took me forever to wind the warp. And then again, there were like, 400 ends to thread um so it took me weeks and weeks to set up and then once i finally started weaving i was like i am bored with this now i was just not interested in this pattern and um yeah so it was kind of a slog to get through but i'm glad it's off my loom and i can just hem the towels and finish them and you know that's all that is happening with that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I feel like I talked for so much more longer than I wanted to. I really thought this was gonna be a brief and concise update and I'm afraid I've rambled on a little bit. Hopefully this video is not too long. If you made it this far in the video, would love for you to leave me a comment with like the most recent emoji you've used <laughs> or a chicken emoji. I'm like, have you made an emotional support chicken? I need to know. I really would love to start doing more frequent and shorter updates. So let me know if that is something that interests you. And again, I have some kind of more one-off spinning fleece cleaning related videos that I would like to make, but I just need to figure out how to film them because I'm not a professional, <laughs> just a girl with her phone <laughs> and her knitting needles. Um, so yeah, would love for you to connect uh, with me on Instagram or Ravelry um, or subscribe here on YouTube and leave me a comment, like this video. I hope whatever you're making is bringing you so much happiness and joy and I will see you next time.